Hi, I'm Margaret and welcome to Garden School. Well, after Thanksgiving dinner, the people gathered at my house go out to the garage where we've collected some greens and we have the materials to make wreaths. We've done that for a couple years. It's kind of a fun thing. So after we've made our wreaths or embellished the ones that we already have existing, what do we do with those extra branches? Well, we can certainly use them for mulch. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about mulch, about what it is, about how to use it, and the importance of using it. So first off, what is a mulch? Well, a mulch is any protective layer that you place on top of the soil. So it could be an organic material, like straw, like leaves, like compost, or, or uh, branches as we're going to use today. Uh, there's other things too, um, nutshells, pine needles, but it can also be inorganic, like it could be um, crushed rock or gravel. That can be considered as a mulch too. But there's another kind of mulch as well, um, a synthetic mulch. And that could be um, something like black plastic uh, or a shredded tires, something like that. Anyway, that the purpose of the mulch is there are multiple reasons that you might want to apply a mulch. Today, we're gonna to use an organic mulch, um, branches, evergreen branches, and the main purpose is to mediate the temperature changes. So when it gets cold here in winter, we want some the soil area to be a little bit warmer and not to get too cold. So that's what we're going to use the mulch for today. You can also use it to um, retain moisture in the soil to prevent evaporation and I've typically done that in the summertime in my vegetable garden. Another thing would be for weed suppression to keep weeds down or to keep them from germinating, to keep the light off of them so they won't germinate. Um, there's also some other reasons too but today what we're going to do with these evergreen branches is mainly to mediate the temperature as it gets cold here in the winter. In this area, I divided some iris earlier this fall, and I wanted to protect the rhizomes as they're in here because they're just right there on the surface of the soil in between the, the different rhizomes. There's just bare soil. So I wanted to protect them a little bit from erosion, from maybe frost heave, you know, if it gets really cold, and, you know, and just to keep the temperature up a little bit. So I added some little green branches here in my planter with my fern that I uh, replaced in here just a couple weeks ago. So since it's a newbie in here, I've just uh, given it a little bit of a blanket, you know, a couple inches to um, keep that temperature up a little bit here. These are some planters with wire vine, and this is the first winter they're going to be outdoors. That's the plan, and I'm not sure how they will do. I'm sure we'll have some die back, but I'd like to retain the, the plant root <laughs> itself. So I've just laid some branches on top of that, and that should be good. Now I will watch to see uh, if the wind blows these off. We do get some gusty winds in the winter so I'll watch for that. As I rake this pathway that's covered with leaves, I'm gonna just put the leaves right into the borders just to apply a little, you know, a few inches of a blanket onto the plants. It will help with weed suppression. It will also help just to make the temperature just a little bit warm and protect the roots. That's really what we're trying to do here is to protect the roots. 
And when it comes to those branches, you'll probably want to remove them early in the spring, perhaps late in winter, depending on what you have, what you're protecting, so that the new growth of whatever it is that you're protecting can come up and grow freely. Now, the nice thing about the branches is that there is a lot of air circulation, so, well, you think, well, isn't that gonna make it colder? Perhaps, but it's really important to have the air circulation and not have it be compact where it will perhaps uh, hold too much moisture over the winter and then you get some uh, of the wrong conditions that you, you do not want to have. So that's one thing to consider about the mulching. Pine needles can also be a great mulch and you can um, apply them pretty thickly onto uh, the top of the soil. That will help with, uh, especially with uh, weed control. But another thing to think about is soil erosion. So if you have a place where you, the soil tends to erode, you might think about maybe a more substantial mulch than the pine needles, which would probably float away if the area got flooded. So if you're going to mulch something for the winter time, consider materials that you might have on hand. Maybe you have a plethora of leaves, dried leaves that have fallen. Go ahead and use those as mulch. Um, another thing is if you have those extra branches, those evergreen branches, consider using those. Those will be really easy to clean up too in the late winter. Just pick up those branches and you know, as you see things starting to come up underneath easy cleanup. You can also use straw if you have a, a resource of, for instance, nutshells. It can also be a great mulch. So, but also consider your intention for mulching. Is it to protect from cold temperature? Is it weed suppression? Is it moisture retention? Or is it maybe just to improve that soil area? Now, a mulch can actually help with that in that um, if it's compost that you're mulching with, of course, that will incorporate some nutrients into the soil. But also it creates a better condition for fungi, the beneficial mycorrhizae, to develop and to thrive in an area like that. So just consider that when you're going to mulch. So if you're done with your wreath making or your pruning or whatever, consider using that as mulch. Well, there's always more to learn in the garden. Bye-bye.